Hey, this is Jeff Tomlinson with EXP Realty. I just want to first off thank you for spending a few moments with me on this video. And I hope that this video is informative to help you guys understand how I got into real estate and why I think it's important that I, the contents that I have to offer to you has some real value because I've experienced a lot of different things over the years and I want to make sure that you know that the experiences I've had hopefully will add value to what you're looking for and that you can use that information to better your situation. So with that being said, I want to have you join me on my little short story here to learn more about how I got into real estate and the experiences I've had. So why don't you join me, okay? Let's go back several years ago well, maybe not that far back, but let's go back about in my 20s when I was hired in the construction industry to do roofs, framing, wiring, and some other tasks at the job site. It was a very exciting time for me because I, I enjoyed what I was doing and learned a lot about construction processes and, and procedures and everything else like that and enjoyed it. But uh, after three years, I decided, hey, maybe this wasn't my long-term um, career and, and decided to move on and to go after my college education. So uh, I, I did that and started that process and during that time I became employed as a maintenance supervisor for five buildings that were multi-million dollar buildings. I had responsibility for all the mechanicals, the interior, exterior, and the maintenance, upkeep, and everything that was involved with those. It was a good learning experience. I did that for about seven years. And during that time, uh, I got married and, and had uh, a few girls, three of them to be exact. And it was a good time for us. We, we had a good experience. But I also was living in a mobile home, just trying to save on costs and expenses because as you know, going to school isn't cheap. So that's what we did for a while. Then it came to a point where our family was growing and kind of bulging at the seams and we needed to move on. So guess what? We wanted to get into a home. We didn't really want to buy one. I thought, why not build one? I think I've got enough experiences and understanding about the construction industry that maybe we like to do that. So we went around and looked at different homes to try to find the best floor plan that would suit our needs as a family. Finally, after a little while, we found the right, what we felt was planned. So we took that plan to an engineer who certified it and had all the engineering specs done. Once that was completed, we started taking those bids to different contractors and service providers, such as uh, a painter and drywall guy, framing and electrical, and want to get a perspective based upon what it would cost them to do that particular service. So after we went and found all the contractors, we got three bids in each area. That way we had a good average. So I could run some calculations and I did tons and tons of calculations on my spreadsheet and made sure the numbers came in and made sense. Well, after I completed that, I had a high level confidence that based upon those numbers, I think we could make this happen. So what we needed to do was find out if we could qualify for that, which I think we could. And we've looked and finally found a lender who we felt had best um, served those purposes to provide us with a good loan because we were in a position that we could qualify for that. So once we had uh, did that, we decided to move forward. But our lender said, wait a minute, you've got to have a contractor when working with us. So we were kind of surprised about that. I thought with my experience, I wouldn't need it but she did say that that's part of the process. So we went and, and interviewed some contractors, never feel like we found the right one. And so we told her that and she said, listen, I've got a contractor who uh, I felt is a good contractor. They're honest, they're reputable, and I've done a lot of deals with. And I thought, all right, well, we'll, we'll meet with them. So we did, showed him the plans. He said, yeah, you can get this thing done. And uh, we discussed what we'd found out. And he said, listen, if you'll use my guys, my framers and foundation guys, as well as anybody else I can use, I'll help save you on some money and, and also help me because it's building his clientele. I, I can agree with that. So given that, we decided to move forward. Well, the next phase in our process was to find a lot. So we went to several different areas, which we felt like might uh, be the right location for us. And after a lot of searching, we came to an area where we're now living and decided that's the lot for us. So we contacted the developer and said, hey, listen, we'd like to get that lot. And uh, they drafted up the, the paperwork, we put the money down on it, ended up uh, getting ready to 
move and close on it because we had rolled that in our construction loan. Well, everything seemed to be going good until one night I was getting ready to fly home and I was on an airplane sitting there and my wife called me and she was crying. I said, what's going on? And she said, listen, the builder doesn't want to sell us a lot anymore. And he said he's not going to honor the contract. And I said, how can he do that? She said, well, I don't know. He, that's what he's telling me. So we had to do some research after I got back. And we found out that technically the contractor couldn't sell us the lot because he hadn't recorded those lots with the city, which meant that he, he had done something illegal. Well, with that, we kind of used it to our advantage and told him, hey, listen, if you don't send us a lot, then we're going to we'll prosecute you on this. So we backed off and said he uh, would let us move forward. Well, we later found out that he wanted to put a parade of home on our lot and uh, that he wanted to promote it. And so that's why he was pursuing it so bad. But another unique thing is, is that that same builder was our neighbor. <laughs> we didn't even know that until later, until we met with him at some social events. And that wasn't a real comfortable situation, as you can imagine. Well, the next thing we did, now that we had acquired the lot, is we needed to stake the home out. And so my contractor went over, staked it out, said he's done. I thought, hey, I'm gonna go check it out. So I drove over there and looked at it, it looked fine until I started looking closer and looked at the markers and thought, wait a minute, something's wrong here. And so I pulled the tape and he had staked the house out four feet too far to the east, which meant that we are now in an easement issue and we couldn't put the home there. And if he would have moved forward without me catching that and put the footing, whatever else he did, then they would have to rip it all out and relocate it to the right position because the city would have never signed off on it. I'm like, geez, dude, how long you been doing this, right? So the next thing we came along was that his footings and foundation people did their job. They put that in and stuff like that. So that was good, right? You would think. Anyways, we're now in the process of starting the framer. And the framing was being put into the basement, first step that is. And we noticed that something was right because one room was supposed to be symmetrical. One wall wasn't coming up right. So I pulled up the plans and then did pull the tape on it. And what had happened is that the footings and foundation guys had put the back wall in too far to the left, which means that now that wall was going to run almost pretty much into a window. So I called them. I said, listen, this is wrong. And they said, yep, you're right. So they had to cut it out and reset it all back in. My like, geez, <laughs> is this your first home? I mean, come on guys. So the next process was with his framing crew and we we're into the second story. So most of the framing's done and the plans called for an open staircase. And so when I looked at it, as they had it completed almost, that there was something wrong because there was a beam there. The plans didn't call for that. And I looked and noticed that the four joists were installed wrong, which meant that we had to find a, a better solution to a remedy that post. And so we did come up with something that was comparable. But I'm like, come on guys, this is <clears throat> kind of annoying that I have to deal with these issues. <clears throat> the next thing that we ran into is what I term as the great lie. So prior to starting this whole process, we had agreed with the contractor that we would co-sign every draft because we wanted to make sure having done our accounting that everything was good and we knew where the money was going that so there'd be no uncertainties. Well, at this point, two months into the process, we're now $10,000 over budget. And I can't figure out why I ran the numbers, look at the receipts and something's not adding up. So we called a meeting between the lender, me and my wife and the contractor. We went over a lot of different things. And finally, after about an hour, the contractor fessed it up that he had lied in that he'd got a bid back from his lumber yard and it was $10,000 over what we had gotten. And we asked him, well, why didn't you tell us? He said, because, Strike two is our lender had told him that we had plenty of money in the bank and we had good credit so that if we needed to get some loan to cover the cost, we could do it. I'm like, so you guys conspire against us and don't even let us know you're making decisions for us. Great team, right? Man, so at that point I said, I've had enough. You're fired, dude. And so the contractor was done at that point. And that's where I took ownership of roofing, the carpentry work, as well as electrician, flooring, painter, tile guy, and installation of other things as well. And unfortunately for me, is that he didn't take ownership of finishing his framing by coming and installing a deck off the back of our house. It's clearly there in the plans and technically you have to have it and it's illegal not to have that far as getting a sign off 
to take occupancy of the home because it shows there's, and not only that, there's a 12 foot drop out of the back of the door. God, talk about getting screwed, right? Well, along all these challenges that we faced, we had another challenge that came up. And that was that my beloved grandma, who uh, uh, known for years, got ill and she ultimately died, which was a hard time for us, not to mention the building, but it was also kind of a blessing because she left us a small inheritance, which helped us to pay for those extra fees. And I'm grateful for that because it uh, put a, a helped us get out of a bind. The next issue we ran into after we had completed most of the work is that now we had hired a painter to come and paint some of the things that I couldn't because I didn't have the equipment to do it. So we agreed to some terms. He showed up on a Saturday as promised. We bailed, haven't been off the job site for months because we're out here every single night until 11 and 12 o'clock, even later at night. And so now's our chance to, to go and we did. So thinking that that was taken care of, we're excited. So we come back the following day to check out his work. Well, the excitement soon left because once we got here, there was beer cans everywhere and there, we walked in the house and there was spray, over spray everywhere. They had not only just sprayed areas that he was supposed to, but he sprayed many areas that he wasn't supposed to, and it ruined many surfaces. So we had to go back and reprep everything after two weeks. I mean, at that point, I just wanted to kill, right? So we had completed that, and we've completed many other things in the preceding month or two. So after we, that point, we'd gotten to where now we're ready to install cabinets. So I called the contractor for the cabinets to come on out and get the ball rolling. He didn't return the calls for a little while. Couldn't find out why until he finally said, listen, I can't get the cabinets to you. And we went like, what the heck, why not? And he said, because he had underestimated the cost of the cabinets, which meant that he wasn't gonna bring them out to us because we weren't paying the, the price that he needed for them. I'm like, that's not my fault, dude. You told me a price, now we're, we're not on the same page. How does that happen? So we ended up having to pay for the 5,000 more because if we didn't, we couldn't close on the loan, which meant that, that we were foreclosed on us because we hadn't honored the contract to complete the whole month time. So we're backed against the wall. We had to move forward. He installed the cabinets. Well, yeah, here we are now, completed. With everything finally done, I took ownership of everything else to get it all finished. Nine months. A long, hard process, but we did it. So we were happy for just a little while until 11 days after that closing, I got laid off from my employer. How much more can possibly go wrong, right? So during that period, I started looking for a job that I was unemployed and I ended up building some plinths and rosettes and corner pieces, the same kind that I used to build the construction of my home. So I was able to offset some of my uh, income lost to sell those to a local lumber yard and they sold them for me. But that was just for a short term period. So I had to find something which I ended up doing. And I found myself employed in, as a project manager and then a project developer and then as a program manager in quality control aspects where we dealt with the public, which was good because I learned to uh, engage and have communications and dialogues and problem solving with people and issues with the items that we had. So that was a really good learning experience, which ultimately ended up benefiting me in the long run. So after all that, after a few years of working and stuff like that, I had come to the point where I hadn't fully reached, but I felt something I enjoyed doing for a living. So I started to reflect back on my history. I had three years in construction. I've also had seven years in facility maintenance. I had six years of project management and stuff. And then finally we had built our home. I thought, what, what does that mean? It, well, hey, it's real estate. I thought, yeah, well, why not? I can get in real estate. So I got licensed and I jumped into it in the early 2000s and had a good ride. We were, I was involved with new construction, development, uh, all the new projects that were coming up in our area. And of course, the traditional sales. Well, and that lasted until about 2009. In 2010, <clears throat> as you might remember or might not, we had what was a huge recession as far as short sales, foreclosures, bank home property, asset managers, and the list goes on and on and on of this new environment we had to deal with. We had to work on these homes sometimes for 18 months to get them sold and keeping everybody calm, everybody on the same page. It took a lot of work to make it happen. 
but also help me again with my skill set. Then in 2015, the market kind of had stabilized, had started coming back, and so we went to back to traditional things with buyers, doing the buyer sides and all the transactions and the whole process, as well as sellers and promoting them in, in, in this process. And then also by 2018 is that when the market had started climbing at a fast rate and we we're somewhat concerned because what we were seeing and then 2020 hit what the heck we had homes at only a 25 percent level of what we normally carry and they'd gone up over 25 percent in value which made it very difficult because we were getting anywhere between 20 and 30 offers on a home as from the buyers you had to be competitive with your offer to get into a home so the craziness and that's kind of where the market still is is what we're dealing with now but during this time period I've kind of learned that some of the following skill sets how to evaluate a home how to negotiate how to conduct an inspection and how to look for the good things in, in, into those homes to help the buyer side to know what to do and then on the seller side you know there are three P's there's the price the promotion and the presentation of the home all key factors in getting the home sold and so we learned to help and assist the sellers with that also how to accurately and um, evaluate a home and its value so we know both on the buyer and seller side where that home could come in for appraisal but then comes the psychology of sales and all the techniques and how to deal with the challenge and difficulties that comes up. Plus, also the acquisition of all these different things and knowledge, we used that to the demographics of an area and what areas were going up, maybe some areas that are going down, the, the not so great areas and the better areas, all in conjunction with helping out the clients. And then the legal jargon, what things to say, what things to avoid, how to um, deal with the obstacles and the issues and to be very tactful about approaches with the people and the issues that are coming up in transactions. Then finally, accumulate all that to over hundreds of homes sold, which I felt was and is a good um, resume if you want to term it that. But then most importantly is that the feeling of your client's needs. Making sure that you're addressing what they're concerned about is key. Because if you implement that with respect, kindness, honesty, goodness, and basically following the golden rule, I, it's always a win-win-win, which is what I believe is most important. There shouldn't be anybody losers. That's not how you do business. And my motto is in serving people through solving their problems that will add value. And I hope that you guys get value out of this video and out of everything that I provide to you on my YouTube channel or any other means. And if you want to contact me or have any questions, please feel free to do so. Whether it's text, email, subscribing to YouTube, I'm here to help you guys out because I know real estate is your biggest purchase probably that you'll ever make. And I'm here in Northern Utah to serve your needs, whether you're relocating or moving out, we're here to help. So I hope to hear from you and wishing you guys all to have a great day. Thanks.